and our reading this morning, yeah, it is this morning, is taken from Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, we're starting familiar verses, verse 10. We'll start from verse 10, Ephesians 6, if you've got your Bibles, and it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual <coughs> hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, that having done all to stand, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, <coughs> above all taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. May God bless the, the reading of his word to our hearts this morning. And verses 10 to 13 teaches us that we are engaged in a spiritual conflict against an enemy that is relentless and does not sleep. And our enemy is identified in verse 11 as the devil who comes against <coughs> God's people. And he will do all that he can to try and destroy our faith, to draw our attention away from God. But it's God's will that we stand against the attacks of the devil. That's what God wants in verses 11, 13, and 14. And when we stand stand as a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ, we refuse to yield an inch of ground to an invisible attacking enemy. We are to defend the holy ground on which we stand, of which has already been taken. That's what Paul meant when he said in Ephesians 4, verse 27, neither give place to the devil. And God has given us some precious ground. And we have the truth of who God is and how much he loves us. We have God's church, we have God's word, God's spirit, God's grace, God's salvation, God's blessing, and so much more, and the enemy seeks to rob us of these things. And if the devil could take them, could take them from us, he would, because he does not want us to have anything from God the Father. Because all that we have from him, it is so, so precious. It equips us. It strengthens us. It enables us to be the man or the woman that God has created, created us to be in Christ Jesus. And so the devil, he tries to keep God's blessings away from us. And if we're going to stand and hold our ground, we need to be clothed in the holy armour of God. And we need this belt of truth that speaks of, of, of a life built on the faithfulness 
uh, to, to faithfulness to the word of God and to the God of his word with the help of truth it speaks of our testimony and how we live because you know truth sanctifies us truth makes us holy truth makes us sacred the belt of truth sanctifies our lives Jesus said in John 17 verse 7 sanctify them through your truth your word is truth so it's important that we have a working knowledge of the word of God of God's truth and that that truth is active in our lives and we yield ourselves we submit ourselves to God's truth and we live it out with the truth of God's word we are set free and we are not deceived Ephesians 4 verse 14 says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting verse 15 speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head christ the only way to combat error is to speak the truth in love the truth sets us free from error and the only way to know the truth is to be exposed to the truth so we will not be tricked but that we can stand firm you know it amazes me when we become a christian we realize how many lies that we have actually believed and when we get into god's word we, re we recognize those lies, we apply God's truth, and boom, we're set free. In the truth of God's word, and in Jesus himself, who is truth, that's where we are. A Christian is in Christ and in the truth. Therefore, we live in an attitude of truthfulness therefore there's no lies that come from our lips there's no deceitfulness there's no falsehood because we know that's from the enemy but when we walk in truth we're walking in light and there's a freedom there isn't the weight of, of the if you like of deceitfulness upon us but the truth sets our hearts free I know one particular person and uh, he was bound up in all sorts of sins and when I was talking with him he confessed those sins uh, to the Lord afterwards he was beaming he said I'm free I'm forgiven the truth of Christ has set me free he says I'm never going to commit adultery again I'm never going to be deceitful again I'm going to walk in the truth. He felt this burden lift off of him. He felt this sense of condemnation that was pressing him down lift off of him because of the truth. Because he believed in Christ and believed that Jesus Christ actually forgave somebody like him. See, having girded your waist with truth in its context, it speaks of an attitude, a commitment, a preparedness. You see, we prepare our hearts in God's word. We come to God's truth. We say, Lord, search me. Test my heart. Make sure that I am right with you. So your truth can flow through me and out of me. And your spirit, who is also truth, can flow and move through me. You see, we serve our God out of sincerity, not out of hypocrisy and lies and falsehood. We are committed to God's truth. We study it. We apply it to our lives. Girded with truth like a belt. 
We are committed to truth and we're ready for a spiritual fight. Because all the fiery darts and all the lies of the enemy are going to come. But we've been in the truth. We've been preparing. We know how to stand and use God's word against the, li against the lies. See, walking in commitment and discipline. And we're in the truth, ready to apply truth and ready to share it. The belt around a Roman soldier's midsection did more than, than bind his clothes to his, his body and have his sword hanging there from the belt. The belt provided him with stability for his back and for his abdomen, for his front, so that he could stand there. It helped him to stand in the day of battle. And when we embrace God's truth, and have his truth around us. Spiritually, we are a very hard target for the enemy to pull down. Because we're focused on the truth. We've applied it to our lives. We've been set free by Christ who is the truth. Knowing the truth is an essential piece of our armour. We have to have this on. We have to be in the word of the Lord so that we can stand in these days. Every day we need to read some of God's word, try and memorize some scripture, get it into your hearts and into your minds because it's our freedom food. This is freedom food, the God's <coughs> truth. And Jesus said in John 8, 31 to 32, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And in that whole context there, you look into the Greek, is there's a freedom there, freedom from slavery. You would go free from being a slave to sin. Disciples of Jesus are in the truth and they remain in his word. And if they do, they shall be free from their sins, free from the lies. We walk, if you like, with a heavenly mindset because we're walking in the truth that has come from heaven. And it is not of this world. The world does not understand it because it's spiritually discerned. And the Holy Spirit reveals the truth of God's word to us. And if we're free from sin, we are free from sin by the word, then we are free indeed. And part of, of, of the function of the Roman belt was... It was so you could put your, put your, I say, how can I put it, your tunic or your robe into it when you had to move quickly. The belt enabled the Roman soldier clothed in armour to put his tunic in it so he could move quickly and hinder. The truth enables us to move quickly so that we do not stumble in sin. This is not any old man-made truth, but this is God's truth revealed to us. That is a belt of truth that sets us free, that enables us to move quickly when we need to. And in the Greek, truth is the same word for reality. Hence, God's truth is not an illusion. It's reality, it's true. Plus, you cannot think of truth without connecting it to knowledge and to wisdom. When we look to Jesus the truth and God's word which is true, we discover knowledge and wisdom which is true. Therefore, outside of God's truth, outside of God's wisdom and knowledge, what is there? There's deception, there's perversion, there's vanity, there's an illusion for which Jesus came to set us 
free from. In fact, Hebrews 6 verse 18 says it's impossible for God to lie. God will always deal truthfully with you because he cannot lie. Therefore, when we come to the Lord in prayer, we too should be open and absolutely honest with God. He knows all things, but he loves to hear us when we are honest and truthful to him. You see, our God wants to place truth in our spirit, in our soul, in our mind. Because Hosea 4 verse 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We have a responsibility to know God's truth so that we are not destroyed. But we can stand on that holy ground for Christ and be free and secure in Jesus. Much of our fight is not in the physical realm. It is in the spiritual realm. Verse 12 we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. That, that's knowledge we need. So we are not destroyed. Because so often the spiritual realm can reveal itself in the physical realm. This can throw us off guard at times because we don't see where the attack is coming from. And we tend to say, I just don't know where it came from. It just came out of the blue. And so and so said this, and so and so did that, and they did this, and they did that. Where is it all coming from? It makes no sense. It's coming from a spiritual realm to attack you, to push you down, to prevent you from walking in the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ that he has given you through his death at Calvary. See, we have a spiritual battle that's going on and we stand in the truth and the truth sets us free. The truth pulls down strongholds from, these, from the enemy. The bell of truth enables us to move quickly without being caught, without being destroyed by powers and principalities. How much time do we spend in the study of God's truth and overcome powers and principalities? You take God's word and you say, Father, this is what your word says and I am standing on it. I am applying your truth to my life, to my family and my situation. We have truth, we have knowledge and wisdom to fight our spiritual battles and win because of Jesus' victory on the cross. And God, truth is mighty truth, is a mighty truth. And we need to feed on it because it is our freedom food. And we need to get this mindset of scripture into our minds so the lies do not rest and stick there and stay there, but we go pray. Jesus is the truth. And as you draw close to him, you discover who he is and more and more of his truth. And we grow in freedom. We grow in peace. We grow in understanding, and as we grow in it, we are able to give it away and share it with others so that they may come to Christ and have salvation in Him. May we stand on God's Word on holy ground, thoroughly equipped in a mighty truth that pulls down strongholds and sets us free. Amen. And we're going to continue in worship unto the Lord. And if anybody would like prayer, then please do feel free to come forward. Holy Father, we pray that we go out.
it's in the spirit of holiness, in that holiness which is so beautiful, which our hearts and souls crave and long for, and it is found in your truth. Lord Jesus, let your peace rest upon us and be in us and in our homes and wherever we go. Gracious Father, draw us closer to your Son by the power of your Spirit, for the glory of Jesus. We go free in Christ and in his truth. We love you, Lord. May your hand rest upon us now and forevermore. Amen.